Good morning and welcome to Church of the Palms. We're so glad you found your way to us today. The Church of the Palms, our mission is to love God and love neighbor, which Jesus said were the two greatest commandments. Our prayer is that these two commands guide everything that we do, our worship, our life together, and our service to the community near and far. This morning's service is our sanctuary worship service. Lyrics to the hymns will be on your screen, as well as scripture texts when the message has begun. You can also access our bulletin on churchofthepalms.org right on our home page. For those who enjoy worshiping in a more contemporary fashion, there is a contemporary service held on campus. Whichever way you like to worship, we hope you can share the opportunity with friends and family who might be searching for a church home. If you'd like more information about any of the announcements mentioned in today's service, feel free to give our office a call or visit us online. Our website is also a great way to learn more about our mission to love God and love neighbor and all about our small groups, classes, and community outreach efforts, some of which you can attend online. If you'd like to financially support Church of the Palms, there are several ways you can support our mission to love God and love neighbor. One of the easiest is online giving, the options of which you will find posted later in the service. We're so glad you chose to join us this morning. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Good morning. Welcome to Church of the Palms. My name is Tim Bannister and I serve as a deacon in our congregation. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship as we bow our heads for the prayer of invocation. Gracious and loving God, with open arms, you welcome all who call on your name, who acknowledge you as Lord and look to you in faith. No one stands outside the circle of your mercy and love. And so we come to offer you our worship, to declare that you are our God and that we are your people, called and chosen by you from the very beginning. Through the presence of your Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see you here, open our minds to receive your truth, and as our mouths to speak and sing your praise. For you alone are God, worthy of all praise and worship, now and to the end of time. Amen. Let us praise God through our worship.
If able, please arise for the call to worship. We are invited to share in Christ's ministry of compassion. We are challenged to learn more about God each day. We are summoned to let the Spirit be planted within us. Let us worship God. say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us, writes the apostle. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. With this good news, let us go to God with our prayer of confession. As you know, God, our healer, we stand on the edge of your promises and hopes yet cannot seem to let ourselves cross over into the life you intend for us. We seek praise from our families, yet are unable to tell them how much we love them. 
We care more about our needs and desires than for the struggles of our neighbors. We think more about the trash we read and see than focusing on the spirit of wisdom. Forgive us, everlasting God. Renew our lives with your grace. Restore our hopes with your vision of tomorrow. Refresh our spirits with your joy, which comes to us new in each moment in the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us continue our confession in silence. Who has the right to pass judgment on your life? Is it your best friend? Is it your worst enemy? Is it your next door neighbor? Is it a member of your family? No, the only person who has the right to pass judgment on your life is Jesus Christ. And Christ died for you. Christ rose for you. Christ reigns in power for you. Christ prays for you. Friends, if a person is in Jesus Christ, that person becomes a new person altogether. The past is finished and gone, and everything becomes fresh and new. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. people of faith, let us say what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. you. Let's now take a moment to greet one another as the children come forward for the children's moment. Well, good morning, friends. 
today I want to introduce you to somebody very special to me, and that is my daughter, Finley. Everybody say, hi, Finley. Hi, Finley. Now, do any of you guys remember when you were this small? No. No? Now, a lot of you guys get to sit here and see when people get baptized. Any of you guys remember that? I think a lot of you guys up here were even baptized here in this very church, right? And it, listen, if there is one thing in my short tenure, seven-week tenure as a parent, I have learned, it is that you cannot do it alone. And trust me, all your parents are a lot better at this than my wife and I are. But one thing that we have learned is that we can't do it alone. And we need a strong community to help raise Finley and to help her know who Jesus is and to know how much Jesus loves her. Right? And it's really cool because when somebody gets baptized, the church, all of our friends out here sitting in the pews, and you guys too, you promise to help Finley learn, and everyone else, she's not getting baptized today, TBD, to come, but she, you guys help promise that child that you are going to help them learn who Jesus is and learn all about Jesus' love. Right? And even at a young age, you guys can be mentors for Finley. And you guys can help her and all of the others who are younger than you guys and older, too, learn more about Jesus. What are some things that you guys think you could, you could teach Finley or another young baby about Jesus? Yeah. Here, speak into the mic for us. Tell her about Jesus. Tell her about Jesus. What are some things that we could maybe teach? Is there anything that we could teach or tell Finley about who God created her to be? Let's hear from somebody else. What is God, how does God create us? Yeah, we got a hand down here. Grant. He created us by nothing. He created us by, he, crea he created us out of nothing. Yeah, and he created us good, right? Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Can we teach anything, can we teach Finley anything about how we treat other people? We treat them with kindly and respect. We treat them with kindness and respect. That's so important, right? And Jesus teaches us to do that too, right? That's part of being who God called us to be. Yeah, see, the thing is that we all need a helpful community to help us know the love and teachings of Jesus. And I want to ask our friends out in the, in the pews out here, would you raise your hand if this church has taught you anything about how to live more Christ-like? Would you raise your hand for me? Yeah. See, this is a community that teaches us all about how to be stronger followers of Christ and to be in a relationship with Christ. And we all need that. And I'm wondering if you guys can promise and commit to helping to be that community for your friends, for your classmates, for Finley and everyone who's younger than you guys, and for this church too. Can you guys promise that? Yeah. Yeah? I wasn't really confident. I promise. But we'll take it. <laughs> Let's pray, guys. How, do, how about we pray? God, we thank you for new life. We thank you that even the youngest of your children can teach us about your love. Lord, we thank you that we are never too young to learn about how much you love us and you care for us and how important it is to be surrounded by a community that helps to teach us that. Lord, may Church of the Palms here be this community for all of these children. May these children be this community for each other as we get to grow together and be supported by our fellow followers of Christ, Lord, as we grow to be greater lifelong disciples. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you guys so much. Let's head off to Children's Church. You can't top a baby for a children's moment, I'll tell you. <laughs> Holy smokes, perfect, wonderful. We are so glad to have you with us today. Good morning. 
and we hope that you find this to be a place of warmth and welcome. We encourage you to check out the Welcome Center in the back of our sanctuary to get some information there that you might be looking for and also connect with us at the connection table underneath the tree and there you will find even more information, opportunities for you to participate, ways to sign up, so on and so forth. Lots of things that are going on here. We're getting revved up. We saw all those kids here this morning. It means that fall is almost here. Though fall doesn't really happen here until December. But anyway, um, uh, but we would love to have you join us for the beginning of Wednesday Night Life, which is this coming Wednesday at 5.30. We'll have dinner and 6.30. There will be a wonderful class being taught by Reverend Lori Haas, and it will be on the Gospel of John. What a great way to begin the year, to begin your uh, your journey with the Gospel of John to reflect upon the life of Christ and how we might become even more committed followers of him. We are looking forward as well to our uh, new lecture, new class called Matter of Balance for Senior Wellbeing. It begins on the 5th of September, so that would be next week. And it's over in the Palm Center. It's going to be for eight Thursdays on um, beginning the 5th at 1 o'clock. It's an opportunity for you to learn a little bit about our practices to keep yourself better balanced. Not that that's an issue for any of you. <laughs> it is for me, I'll tell you that. So, um, so keep that in mind. It would be a great opportunity for you to, you know, to take a good, healthy choice for yourself. Presbyterian women are having their fall kickoff on September the 14th. That's a Saturday morning at 1130 to 1 o'clock over in the Campus Center. More information about that is on page 13 of your bulletin. We are grateful to have uh, joining our staff a woman who's not a stranger to many of us already, Susan Fernandez, who has been a volunteer in our food pantry, our front office, and our Palms Angels. Susan is now taking the next step and joining us on our staff to be our tutoring coordinator. She'll be working alongside of Corinne as the two of them tandemly will be uh, responsible for this great tutoring ministry of which Church of the Palms has been a part for many, 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 many years. You use that as an opportunity to remind yourself that you might want to jump into the tutoring community and help us to come alongside of children uh, all the way from first grade into early college to help them uh, get better acquainted with their subjects, to give them a little boost, and frankly, to be a reflection of the light of Christ. What a wonderful way to kind of come alongside in a very tangible way one of our neighbors and uh, encourage them to grow in their uh, intellectual pursuits as they continue to grow as a human being. So we encourage you to um, uh, jump into the tutoring ministry. Also at 10 o'clock, Susan Fernandez will be underneath the tree and she would be glad to welcome you there. So take a look at uh, the tutoring table over there and welcome her into our midst. We are so happy that we've had Mia Bugen right over here, our little four-year-old wonderful instrumentalist. Would you give her another big round of applause? Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, Mia, what did you do when you were four years old? I just want you to, I want to know that. What a wonderful gift you have been to our congregation. So thank you for sharing your wonderful talents. We just heard early this morning that one of our dear, dear friends, a wonderful brother in Christ, Dick Thompson, passed away very suddenly last night of a heart attack. Uh, we don't know any other information about arrangements because this has all happened so soon. Um, we will keep you aware. You might want to check the church office if you'd like to learn more about arrangements for, um, for Dick. But we'll certainly keep Liz and our prayers, who's just returned home from the hospital herself, um, so that um, she might be well cared for by her community. They were up in Michigan at that time, and uh, of course that's where... Dick is from originally, and so we'll let you know about arrangements um, for the Thompson family over the course of the next uh, several days. Let's continue our worship.
Let us continue to worship God in prayer. Our most gracious and loving God, we come before you this morning full of love and gratitude for you have loved us from before we were ever born. We give you thanks for loving us all the time. We thank you that we get to worship you in freedom and peace. We remember and pray for all our brothers and sisters who are under bondage and threat. We grieve that they are not free to worship you. We pray for a new day of freedom in worship for all your children. Almighty God, we thank you for this great nation, and we pray for your guidance for all our leaders 
and ourselves as we discern our future together. Be with us as we move towards our nation, our national elections, that they may be fair and open and responsive to your leading, we pray. Loving God, keep all those who are in school safe each day, we pray. Gracious God, we pray for those who serve on the front lines of human need, danger, and opportunity. Especially, we pray for those who serve in the armed forces and in our police departments, first responders, and emergency medical services. Powerful God, we pray for leaders around the world that new vision might lead to new path to peace, justice, and security. We remember all the missionaries and all those who work for the sake of others. Safeguard them, we pray. Merciful God, bless those who are sick with your healing power, we pray. Protect all those who need safety from abuse and oppression and exploitation. Be with those who are alone and lonely this day, we pray. Comfort those who are grieving and bring new hope and purpose into their lives, we pray. May they know that your love still connects them with those who have died and that in the end, we shall be reunited reunited in the grace of your eternal life. Bless the missionaries and ministries of this church and our sisters and brothers in churches around the world. May everything we do reflect to your glory and honor, we pray. Now hear us as we pray together as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive the debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we have come to a place of moment of gratitude in worship. We are grateful to God for all the blessings we received from God every day. Today, we are especially grateful to God for those who work in the night while we sleep. We're thankful for all those who leave their comfort zone and work to help others, missionaries and soldiers and humanitarian workers alike. We are grateful that we get to give to God to support them. The four ways of giving is on the back of your bulletin um, at towards the bottom, and also there are baskets at each door of the church. Let us give to God generously. My soul shake off thy guilty fears, the bleeding sacrifice in my behalf.
received on Calvary. They pour effectual prayers, they strongly plead for me. with me. Giver of all gifts, may you find acceptable what we bring forward as our offering to you today. Lord, may the gifts that are brought forward further your kingdom, further the ability of us being able to share the good news of the gospel and to make your kingdom known both here in Sarasota and in the ministries within here at Church of the Palms and the ministries afar and in different countries and all of the ways that our hands reach into the world around you to make your kingdom known and our mission to love God and love neighbor. Lord, we lift these up to you today. In Christ's holy name, amen.
be seated. And as you're being seated, breaking news, this just in, Mia is six years old and in first grade, right? Yeah, wasn't she awesome? Mm. Oh my gosh, second grade, stand corrected again. Thank you, Mia, for being here. <laughs> the scripture passages for today come from the book of Colossians. You may recognize our first passage from chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. Hear now the word of God. Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, having been firmly rooted and now being built up in him and established in your faith, just as you were instructed and overflowing with gratitude. The second passage is also from Colossians, the third chapter, beginning at verse 8. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, enslaved and free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, Clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God, and whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. God. Let us pray. Open our hearts and minds, O Lord, to the word just read and the words to come that they might speak to us in the way we most need to hear today as we try to follow Christ more closely. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So at fall kickoff last Sunday, we launched our theme for the program year at Church of the Palms called Firmly Rooted. The phrase comes to us from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, which we just read. It might be something we all want to memorize this year. I just read a great article that says the more we try to memorize things, the better it is for our aging brains. So there's that. Steve kicked off our theme last week with a great sermon on being firmly rooted in Christ. And I want to share with you just one paragraph of his sermon because it leads to our second part today of being firmly rooted in each other. Steve said this, so Jesus is the great, in his great love for us, sends his spirit to those early followers of Jesus. And the spirit makes out of them a thing called the church, the community of believers who are committed to the same things Jesus was committed to, committed to the word of God, committed to the study of scripture, committed to life together in small groups, committed to prayer and worship, committed to mission in the world. The church becomes the very soil of our lives. It becomes the very dirt into which we grow our roots. People say you can become a Christian and not go to church, and Steve says, poppycock, because that would be like saying you can be a tree without roots. You can be the real thing without any foundation, and it's just not possible. You just will not bear fruit 
unless underneath you there is a deep root system. This deep root system formed in the church that reaches out to others in connection and support and care is anchored by a taproot. If you were to pull up a plant or dig up a dandelion or find a shrub uprooted, you will notice that each has a central support system called a taproot from which the other smaller roots develop. For this metaphor, imagine that the taproot being our connection to God. Taproots provide stability, nourishment, and growth. This spiritual taproot is the core of our very being, the dwelling place of divinity, the central source of goodness and love that grounds our existence. From this connection to God, because we are rooted and grounded in love, we are called to grow out and reach for others in a nourishing and sustaining network, beginning, of course, first in the church. To take this metaphor one more level, I want to tell you about the Pando clone. Pando is an aspen grove in central Utah in the Fish Lake National Forest, It originated from a single seed and has grown to more than 40,000 trees. It spreads by setting up new shoots from the expanding root system. It is the largest single organism in the world. 40,000 trees spreading over 106 acres, all from one seed and one interconnected root system kind of like the spread of Christianity. From our divine vertical connection, our divine taproot, we are compelled to reach out to those around us. And as the Apostle Paul writes in his letter to the Colossians, we are invited to a particular way of connecting to one another. Here our metaphor shifts a bit from roots to clothing. Earlier in chapter 2 of Colossians, the apostle summons his brothers and sisters in Christ to empty their closets and put into the dumpster things like sexual immorality, impure actions, lust, wicked thoughts, and greed. Paul also calls Colossae's Christians to discard anger, rage, spite, slander, and lying. These are, after all, practices that characterize what he calls the old self. So once we discard this old clothing, we are given a new vision. We are now invited to see all people as having equal worth, value, and belonging because of Christ. There is nothing to stop us from reaching out and connecting with everyone in the church and beyond. One of the great effects of Christianity is that it destroys the barriers. In this new life, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free people. You see, the ancient world was full of barriers. I wonder what barriers still exist in our modern world. William Barclay gives us some insight on the context of this passage to the Colossians that I found helpful. The Greek looked down on the barbarian, and to the Greek, anyone who did not speak Greek was a barbarian. The Greek was the aristocrat of the ancient world, and he knew it. The Jewish people looked down on every other nation because they belonged to God's chosen people, and the other eight nations did not. The Scythian was notorious as the lowest of the barbarians. According to Josephus, a Scythian Scythian was just a little short of being a wild beast. The slave was not even classified in ancient law as a human being. He was merely a living tool with no rights of his own. His master could thrash or brand, or maim, or even kill him on a whim. 
there could be no fellowship in the ancient world between a slave and a free person. Imagine how radical Christ's message of love and inclusion and connection sounded to this original audience. In this world of a clearly defined social structure, Jesus came in and broke down all the barriers. He destroyed the walls that came from birth and nationality, from ceremonial and ritual practices, between classes and between cultured and the uncultured. In this new church of Christ, the greatest scholar in the world could break bread with the simplest, uneducated man in perfect fellowship. The slave could be the worship leader, and the aristocrat could be a part of his congregation. Once we are firmly rooted in Christ, there is no limit to whom we are called to reach out to and to connect with, because Christ is all and in all. From the beginning, God knew that our lives are better together. We live in a shallow and selfish age, and we all need either a gentle reminder or a full-on conversion from looking out for just ourselves to looking out for one another. Franciscan priest Richard Rohr wrote a few years ago, it is time to hear and heed a call to a different way of life to reclaim a very old idea called the common good. Jesus issued that call and announced the kingdom of God, a new order of living, which is in sharp contrast to the political, religious, and social kingdoms of the world. Rohr goes on to say, Christianity is not a religion that gives some people a ticket to heaven and makes them judgmental of all others. Rather, it is a call to relationship that then changes all our other relationships. Jesus showed us how a new relationship with God, our taproot, also brings us into new relationships with our neighbor, including and perhaps especially with the most vulnerable of this world. As part of this new life in Christ, the Apostle Paul invites all listeners, all y'all, to embody compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, forgiveness, love, peace, and thanksgiving. As you are well aware, these qualities find little airplay in our world today. Social media, advertising, entertainment, and political campaign industries have become our society's multi-billion dollar machine that attempts to form us as people who most desire power possessions and winning at whatever the cost. In mainstream culture, Qualities like humility, compassion, and forgiveness are mocked or are seen as well-suited for children or naive people who have so far escaped life's hardships and tragedies. However, in Colossians, these same qualities are not only directed to adults, they are stated as emblems of wise, mature people who know what life is actually all about and who seek to live into what it means to be firmly rooted in Christ and reaching out to others. This reminds me of the Grant study, which attempted to define the good life by tracking the lives of nearly 300 Harvard men. The study began in 1937 when the men were sophomores, and it followed them for more than 70 years through war, career, marriage, divorce, parenting, grandparenting, retirement, and old age. George Valiant directed the study for four decades. And when asked, what have you learned from the Grant study men? He replied that the only thing that really matters in life are your relationships to other people, firmly rooted reaching out. When I think of a group of people 
who seem to inherently know and embody this, I think of farmers. They seem to be experts at putting their own needs behind those of their neighbors. Now, you don't have to be a farmer or from a small town to have experienced the connection and the care from someone. I'd like to invite you to think of a person or a group of people who mirror these virtues. You know, the ones who are not flashy or seeking attention, but who would quietly and selflessly lend a hand, bring a dinner, or just sit with you in silence. Take a moment, picture that person, and give thanks to God for their impact on your life. A few years back in Crosby, North Dakota, Lane Unjum was driving his combine to harvest his wheat when suddenly it caught fire. While fighting the fire, Unjum suffered a heart attack and was flown by medical helicopter to a hospital about 150 miles away. A destroyed combine, a life-threatening condition, and his livelihood still out in the field would be the undoing of a single lone person. But because his roots reach out and are interconnected in the community, he experienced something much different. The good folks of Crosby know better than most that when the harvest is ready, it's ready. Every day it sits in the sun or gets rained on, the quality drops and the price drops. So on the third day, 40 to 50 neighbors converged on the Unjum farmstead with their combines, semis, and other harvesting equipment. In a little more than seven hours, the group caught, cut 1,000 acres of wheat. In addition to their time, they also donated almost $5,000 from their own meager accounts for other supplies that were needed for the harvest, along with the meals that were needed to feed this big crew. The ethos of this town resembles the call of what it means to be firmly rooted in Christ. We are never meant to be a single plant in the field, selfishly grabbing everything we think we need for a bigger, better life. Christ compels us to reach out in love to those around us for the common good and for the only thing that really matters. One of my favorite poets, as you probably know, Steve Garnis Holmes, captures this well in his poem called Rooted. You can close your eyes and listen, or you can read along. You are not a potted plant, dependent on your little cup of dirt for faith. You are planted in Christ, the roots of your soul tangled with the roots of a thousand saints, like the million hands of a whole tribe's memory grasping deep earth, roots like a lover's arm reaching down into that love drinking water from underground springs gushing up, roots wound like lovers' legs in fungal webs of trade and alchemy, each providing what the other lacks, holding hands beneath all that can be seen deep in the earth of Christ. You pray and praise with branches of the Spirit's hands, passing news from bird to bird and life from sun to little mouths that sing. Rooted in Christ, you are not a tree. You are a forest abounding. As a forest called Church of the Palms, you might be wondering how all of this applies to you. We're already here together in worship, singing and praying and connecting as we listen to God's word. Beyond that, we also have mission and serving in our church's DNA. But one area where I can imagine us growing just a little bit is in our connection with each other through our Life Together groups. It is in these small groups where we dive deeper into God's word and into our lived experiences it is in life together groups where we get to practice being seen 
and really seeing others with the assurance that we have value and that we're all worthy of belonging. It becomes the safe place where we get to practice compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, love, peace, and thanksgiving. It becomes the safe place where we get to practice rupture and repair through deep listening, apologies, and forgiveness. Perhaps you will be joining us in person or online for the Gospel of John on Wednesday nights, which starts this week. I wonder if you might consider getting a group of friends together to discuss the teaching as you do life together. If you don't want to form your own group, groups are available in person and online, and you can sign up today under the tree with Heather, or you can reach out to Pastor Mingy, who will make sure you get plugged in. If you're already committed in a small group, maybe it's time to invite someone new into your group or to help them get involved. Friends, this is so important that on our staff, we have been meeting weekly in small groups for years. We believe that we must practice these vital life-giving virtues right here where it's safe so that we can begin to live them out in our communities. Our hope and our prayer is that as we connect with the neighbors, they might see a tiny light in us that they don't always see in others, that they begin to see that Christ is all and in all. And who knows, maybe they will taste and see that the Lord is good. Friends, as you leave here today firmly rooted in Christ, perhaps you can have a conversation with him this week and wonder about how you might be reaching out to someone else in a new way. Receive now this blessing. May the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes, the love of God reflected in your hands the wisdom of God reflected in your words, and the knowledge of God flow through your hearts so that all might see and believe. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.